right, who do we have here in the back? Jim Buck. Jim Buck. Who's in front of Jim? Tommy. Tommy. Okay. And behind behind the donation bucket? Um, that's Michael Berry. Michael Berry? Yeah. Okay. And who's that to your... Richard, Richard Berry. Uh, let me be sure I got you in there because you were kind of behind the bucket. You're good now. Okay. And Kathy Berry. And Kathy Berry. Okay. Here we are at uh, Camp 40 Acres where it's probably about maybe 82, 83 degrees in the shade here and uh, certainly a lot cooler down in Wilmington. We hope to, uh, that a lot of you will be able to come out and visit today. This is all cake made by Kathy Berry. The problem is when you get to be my age and you try to get out of it, you for a number of years.
Yeah, yeah. Walk Kaylin, 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 back off. That's enough. That's enough. Oh, what are you guys doing? See? Okay. Okay. Everyone let go of the rope. Okay. Would you turn it down? I could actually. Is it better? Is it better? Um, I just want to welcome everybody to Camp 40 Acres today on this beautiful, hot, muggy afternoon. It's probably at least five degrees cooler here than the center of Wilmington. If I could have uh, everybody over here under the pavilion, uh, I'd like to make a few statements about the camp and, uh, and then we can get on with the festivities. We've actually begun the festivities, but we're going to continue with them after this. Well, this is technically our 51st year of Camp 40 Acres. Um, we incorporated in 1948 on December 7th. Um, for all those students that uh, are astute in American history, can you tell me what date that is? Pearl what? Pearl Harbor. Pearl Harbor. Who said it? Good job, right there. Dan Cheney. That's also known as Pearl Harbor Day. Um, the articles of organization were formed then. and. Uh, so we're in our 51st year of existence at the camp. Uh, the original board of directors that started the program uh, were a gentleman named Herbert Higginbotham. This is going back a few years, of course. Uh, he was the first president of Camp 40 Acres. Philip Bazell was the treasurer. George Campbell was the clerk. Guy Nichols, Frank Hadley, Foster Balsa, and Ralph Odeon uh, were the original directors along with those other three. Um, the only one I had the pleasure of ever meeting was uh, Foster Balsa. Uh, for many, many years, for those that know the camp and were involved in the camp and are here um, from the past and from the present, um, Foster was, was Camp 40 Acres, but I'll talk to you a little bit about him in a, in a few minutes. Um, I'm going to read uh, the original a quote or a paraphrase from the original articles of organization that were filed in December of 1948. Um, and it goes something like this, that their purpose to foster, encourage and promote the young people's activities and programs, especially in the town of Wilmington, Massachusetts, in general to foster, encourage and promote educational, athletic, social, and patriotic activities among the boys and girls and young people of said town in its vicinity, unquote. Well, through the years, uh, Camp 40 Acres, approximately 40 one acres on this property here, and another two to two and a half acres of Camp Omen that was, um, is also part of the camp. It's separated by a real short section of the town forest. Um, it's been the training ground um, for many of the area's Boy Scouts uh, and other scouting org organizations, the Girl Scouts. Uh, I think a, a Bluebird group used to be up here using this as a summer camp. Um, if you look around, uh, some of the people that are revisiting this notice that it hasn't changed all that much. So a lot of the uh, hard work that people put into back in the for late 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s is still evident here. Some of the Adirondack sleeping cabins that we have spread out amongst the camp have been the work of Boy Scout uh, groups for many, many years and continues to. Some of the more, more recent ones are just across the way. We've uh, opened up another area in uh, the last... Eagle Scout, was it, is it Chris right here, was responsible for building that Adirondack and a couple of the camping area and the benches that go along with it. But um, also for many years, um, sometimes in the town of Wilmington, people come up and they ask me, where is this camp? So I tell them um, at the 
former second grade teacher. I said, Wilmington's a right-handed mitten. I said, and you are here. And the top of the mitten is the top part of the border between Wilmington and Andover, and that's where Camp 40 Acres is located. Um, the special needs program uh, for many, many years under the auspices of the Wilmington Recreation Department uh, called Camp Their Home. I know uh, throughout the 70s, 80s, and they were um, based here for a summer camp. And oftentimes people have associated the camp with that. And I'm sure it got tremendous publicity. And uh, people will ask me, well, isn't that a special needs camp? I, when I say, well, let me explain it to you. They say, well, I've heard it's owned by the Boy Scouts. And, and so uh, I think at one um, humorous uh, point a couple of years ago at a town meeting, when they were rezoning a section of Wilmington for the adult um, entertainment section um, for a purpose to, to keep that um, in check, one of the gentlemen stood up and said, well, why don't we just take the camp and we'll make that the adult zone. So um, I kind of stood, raised my hand and the uh, town manager, before I could, could stand, mentioned to the people and explained to them that Camp 40 Acres wasn't owned by the town of Wilmington. But we certainly have been home to a lot of the different groups that have used it. And uh, I b believe I became involved in 1978. Uh, I was invited to a meeting by Charlie Gilbert um, over the... Evelyn Kaminsky's house, and I was just telling her that I still can't to this day remember which house it is, except she has a big K on the side of a chimney, and that's how I can locate it. Um, at that time, I think the board had about 12 members. Um, some of those members um, that, in that meeting that I remember, Evelyn Kaminsky was the president, uh, Charlie Gilbert, I believe, was the vice president, uh, Gloria Madeira was treasurer, Barbara Buck was the clerk, Joe Courtney was legal counsel. And I remember Foster being at the meeting and Dick Reiner, just to name a few people. I may have forgotten some of them over the years. I was probably a little intimidated being all 21 years at the time. But these people accepted me on the board and for the next 10 or 15 years kept this camp open, clean, usable, and to many youth groups in the area. I still remember Mrs. Kaminsky's um, meatball subs that she used to prepare for the cleanup every year. Um, and I just want to mention that because we missed them. I don't miss a lot of them, but um, we haven't had as many cleanups or those kinds of cleanups since. But at this time, um, I would like to introduce another uh, person in the town that many of you know has worked tire tirelessly for the people in this area and is responsible actually for having what we have as a great resource that abuts the camp um, to most of the Wilmington end of it, the town forest. I'd like to introduce Mr. Maselli at this time. Thank you very much. And I will be brief and uh, not to sound corny, but I'm humbled by some of the people who are being honored this afternoon for their contribution to this camp. And they've been involved for many years, and as you heard earlier, we have this here today because of them. And I had a little involvement many years ago when I first moved to town. I met Foster Balsa, and I belonged to a group at that time called the uh, JC's. And he came to see us to talk about Camp 40 Acres, and he asked us if we would help him by pouring a pad for a generator up here. And uh, let me tell you, it doesn't look much different than it did then. So we came up here on one Saturday, about eight of us, poured that pad, mixed the cement by hand, and uh, the gen I don't know if that generator exists today. And the generator at that time was put on top of that pad. But I had a brilliant idea while we were here. We needed a fundraiser for the organization. So we asked him if we could use this facility and we would put on a breakfast and uh, we would retain some of the proceeds and give some to Camp 40 Acres. And it sounded like a great idea at that time. But we weren't uh, used to uh, cooking outdoors, shall we say. So we got a piece of sheet metal. We built a little uh, platform and built the fire under the sheet metal and then proceeded to cook eggs on top of this almost white hot piece of metal. And let me tell you, the chow that morning was great. But we had a good time and that was my first introduction here. And then later on, my son became a scout and we were up here on uh, many occasions. But the people who worked very hard for this organization are being honored this afternoon. And I'd like to uh, read their names and present them with a citation. The gentleman on the camera, Richard Grinder, 
You put that on automatic pilot, haven't you? Is Barbara Buck? Is Barbara here? Oh. Oh. Make it Jim. Her son Jim's here. Jim? Oh, yeah, you. Good to see you, Jim. Accepting for Barbara. Anybody here representing Joe Courtney? Joe's here. Oh, he is. Where is he? Oh. Charlie Gilbert here? He's not. He couldn't get Okay. Medeiros? Okay. Evelyn Kaminsky. Very good. <laughs> so, thank you for making me part of this program. Thank you for inviting me. And as what was stated earlier, when we took that 100 acres by eminent domain after a nasty fight, uh, we always felt that it would be a good compliment to this camp. And uh, this is the area that's utilized. But I know there's been talk about the folks who are involved here. Maybe someday, uh, do I want to use the term accessing that that's resource? But I'll tell you, it's wonderful to be back. It brings back all good memories. There are no negative memories concerning this place, and I think you all feel the same way. Thank you very much for making me part of this program this afternoon. Thank you. Um, yeah, as a matter of fact, the last Eagle project um, involves uh, laying out some trails. Um, when the scouts um, built the last Adirondack cabin, I think I, said, I think we have enough for a while. Let's think of something else that would make the camp a little more accessible to people. And at the same time, the uh, town forest and the conservation commission was uh, talking about access to the camp, and the roads work their ways in and out of the camp and over to the town. We don't know exactly where the borders are. We've walked and looked at the land, but we're not exactly sure where the borders are. So the last um, Eagle Scout, uh, Mike um, Cochran, is, came up, he and I came up last fall and laid out about four or five new trails that we hope to expand. And what I mentioned to him at the time after talking with the Conservation Commission is if it would be appropriate to run spurs from those trails towards the town forest land because I know that people um, in, in passive recreational use, we've had use of the town forest for years and we thought it would be a nice compliment for people using this camp, or people using the town forest to be able to extend their hikes and um, stay on the trails. And so that's um, uh, something that's all right in the works now. We're hoping to get completed very shortly. Uh, just a short, quick, funny story, but I was, um, we're, we're always conscious of um, building. As you know, this used to be a sand pit behind us, and now it's a, um, a multi-million dollar development of homes, and um, the, the encroachment of, um, a building on the Andover side has always made us a little bit nervous and I came in last spring to set up the outdoor life program I see pink tags on the on the trees and someone said well what's that pink tag for I said I don't know but I'm gonna get to the bottom of this someone's been in here tagging our trees and as I left I realized that it was Mike and I that laid those out that's our new trail <laughs> so you see the pink tags you gotta start using them because we gotta break those trails in but um, I mentioned some of um, the board members that I can remember over the years and some of the people that have been involved for so, so, for so many years. Um, I talked about a gentleman in that group, um, uh, most people that remember Foster Balsa. He was the last original uh, member of the board of directors. I believe Foster passed away in 1990. Um, all I remember from Foster as a kid growing up in Boy Scouts Foster was here 40 acres. Foster was, um, you know, I, I, I think we, we, we thought he lived here. Um, he, I can't go back that many years. I'm going to guess that he was probably involved um, as pre I don't even know when he was president, but I know him. He, for a long time, he was the guy that did everything. He was the guy that Camp 40 Acres was most known for. So I, 
I would be remiss if I didn't mention Foster Balsam and, and all the hard work. And I think um, through some of those early years, he was the heart and soul of this place, along with some of the original members as well. But I think Foster, um, I know he was involved with the Boy Scout group, and I, but he also, uh, he was this place as well. So I wanted to mention Foster. But um, it's now 1999, and um, we've been, we're in the middle of upgrading the camp because 50 years have come and gone, and um, it's been a great place. Um, we want to establish this for uh, another 50 years, and we know that we needed to do some changes. Uh, one most especially was the um, latrines that we have here. Uh, a lot of the use of the camp uh, has dwindled um, because groups don't know what latrines are, and they would like to um, use flush toilets. We've lost a lot of groups to, that rent Harold Parker, or Wilmington groups that really should be coming up here. So going back to the original charter, we know that um, as much as the Boy Scouts have really um, gotten probably the most use out of it and given the most to the camp, um, the special needs program, uh, the, um, when Miss Kelly came, the three of us worked, uh, is it 11 years now, that we uh, started that program with about 20 kids in the summer. They were, we were desperately looking for a place to have a camp, and the camp was looking for a tenant, so we uh, started the extended day summer camp was started right here, and it ran for three or four years, maybe even five years up here on a regular basis from 7 in the morning to 6 o'clock at night until she now has, a, I'm going to say, over 200 kids probably enrolled and uh, basically outgrew the facility. Hopefully some, we get our flush toilets in or we get a couple things done, we'll, we'll get you back at some point but in the future because it's such a nice place. Um, it's at least five degrees cooler here than any other place in the summertime. So, and As far as bugs, has anybody been bothered by any? Because I'm never bothered by them in the, in the daylight hours. So it's a, it's a beautiful place. But we do have um, those goals coming up. Um, I do want to at this time introduce some of the people who are involved with the camp at present. Um, since we are just uh, six months away from the, the millennium, um, these are the people who are trying to make sure that our children and our children's children have the same opportunities to enjoy it as we did. Uh, I'm going to introduce again Dick Grinder, who has already been mentioned as our Vice President. Dick. <laughs> Following in Barbara's um, tenure as Jim Buck, our Treasurer. I don't see Bob Roscoe here. He's our clerk right now. He's a gentleman that's involved in the environmental group in Tewksbury. Um, Bob Peterson here. I don't know if he's here. He's been doing some uh, legal consulting for us in the past. Um, and we have the directors, Joe Courtney, Charles Gilbert, Leo Woodside, Charlie Kirk. Doing the cooking back there, and we're going to get a chance in a second to enjoy that because I'm, I'm, I'm cutting this shot as quickly as I can. That's uh, Mr. Doug Cheney back here. <laughs> My sister Kathy Barry, I know she's here somewhere. Mike Abel's uh, one of my more recent uh, members of the board. Jolene Meisler. Chip Bruce. A uh, gentleman named Tom Joyce, who couldn't be here today, and uh, Joe LaBeouf, who is also our caretaker. And, of course, Rick Barry. <laughs> we've, um, I just want to talk a little bit about, fit. we're in, we're actually working towards phase two, and that's to get a, a modern toilet facility here, and we're doing as much as we can. As you drive in here, you see that as much as the camp hasn't changed, there's also um, a lot of help that we need. Um, the camp has always existed on charitable donations from people, and it's also existed on volunteer help. And what we're hoping for is to generate enough interest and get enough of the youth in the town using this program where it will uh, sustain itself, but we need some help with some of our major projects. So uh, we call the, the, the modern toilet age the phase two section of it. <laughs> and we're hoping that some of the local groups that we've talked to will help us um, start to construct that very soon. And phase three is um, something we haven't really talked too much about, but we're interested in 
establishing um, more of a permanent uh, place for a caretaker and a program director so that we can continue to do the fine things and offer the kind of programs that we'd like to at the camp here. Um, as um, different people get on board and, and have a lot of enthusiasm and, and um, have a lot, a lot of time on their hands. Uh, other people don't have as much time, and other people put in a lot of time, so the board's constantly changing. And I think what we were looking for is some a little more consistency as far as um, getting some programs running in here and getting people to use it. So um, phase three is, is, is coming soon, and that's hopefully with the help of the community and people out there. Um, we'll be um, doing some more contacting with some of the local businesses. Um, I do want to mention that two years ago when the National Guard came in and we started phase one renovations, um, they only asked us if we would feed them. So in about a week and a half we got on the phone and wrote letters and um, people came out of the woodwork to help the program. Um, people sent cash donations, we went to a lot of the local businesses and they opened up their kitchens and they opened up their hearts and they uh, gave us whatever we needed. The National Guard we're telling the, the, be the rest of the guys at Camp Curtis Guild that they, they, they missed out not working on this project because they were being fed so well that uh, the other guys were eating sandwiches while these guys were hacking, having chicken dinners from Mancini's and, and meatballs and, and, and spaghetti dinners from Rocco's and some of the other local townspeople. I think uh, analog devices provided lunches for them every day and it was really nice. And I, I know that um, at this point, um, just a mention to some of our local businesses that we have a nice youth camp here, um, and they'll, they'll do the same, they'll, we'll, we'll get the same kind of response. But this time we're not looking for food, we're looking for blocks, and we're looking for uh, timber, and we're looking for hard work, and we're looking for somebody to help us um, build some of the things that we need to do to keep it going. Anyways, I know these are lofty goals, and I've kept you probably longer than I intended to, but um, I just wanted to end by saying that we owe it to the original founders of those seven people that I mentioned to you to keep the camp going. We owe it to the town of Wilmington to keep the camp going. And most importantly, we owe it to our own children, their children, and their children. Thank you very much. Now, we'd like to have everybody migrate their way to the back and enjoy some of the food that we have. We have a demonstration coming up in about 15 minutes where we're going to show you some of our uh, athletic Boy Scouts doing the High Elements Ropes course. So if you can stick around, we certainly have some things on the docket. and Feel free to speak up. I also, I would be remiss if I didn't mention, you got to at least look at my wife's cake. You got me without a cup of coffee in my family. Wait a minute. Oh, that's the only way to do it. I'll be working on something else.